Now, let us take the opinion of a constitutional lawyer before we also listen to comments made by the River State Governor on his position of judges. Now, and if we have good connection, good morning to you, Barry Stylias of all. Nice to have you on the program. Yeah, good morning, Vito. Um, I'm sorry I've been having some issues with my connection. Um, I just hope I, I, I get it right in no time. I, I'm not within, as you can see. Um, yeah. Um, the time difference is also a challenge. I'm trying to <laughs> readapt so many things. Quite yes, understandable. Um, without wasting. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear me clearly. We can hear you clearly. We can see you clearly. Let's get straight into the discussion. What do you make of uh, the comments by former President Goodluck Jonathan? Um, actually, um, I, as a matter of fact, I have not. Um, I have not. Um, 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 thoroughly followed up on that uh, development, but what I can say is, the party code has a lot, um, a lot to to do with um, the the verdict um, of of the verdict the court handed down and all that. So um, it, it 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 has a lot to do with it. Um, if if the if the party code um, has that um, spelled out in express terms, then so be it. Um, but in recent time, we've seen that we've seen a whole lot of um, um, controversies regarding um, courts' uh, verdicts, court judgment, and where 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 things are not done in a proper way, where things are not um, followed up in line with uh, spelled out rules. Um, um, yeah, uh, yeah, we, we've seen that we've seen that in so many in so many uh, political cases. I wouldn't know what um, uh, the issue is. Uh, but the insinuation in several quarters um, are that judges are influenced here and there. Of course, I've seen the statement of the incumbent governor of River State um, where um, he's trying to say that judges are cutting corners and all that. I wouldn't want to jump into that conclusion. Um, um, my intention is to take my time to look at the party code, to check what the rules are, what they have actually uh, brought up to say this is what... Um, has been written down in the party code, in the party constitution, or whatever they call it, um, that um, <clears throat> empowers <clears throat> empowers such um, such um, um, such um, action. That's all I can say about that for now. Now, let's also look at something a lot of persons say should embolden the judiciary to work. It is the increased wages and allowances. President Bola Metinibu did approve that they have better allowances. But in the opinion of the River State Governor, he feels that there are still paymasters that have the will of bending these judges to their whims and caprices. Don't you think that at a time when the President has upped the payment for judges and judicial officers, they should be somewhat unbribable or even able to quite rightly turn down the monies their paymasters uh, brandishing their faces? Yeah, um, absolutely, absolutely. And um, you know that, um, like uh, Chino Achebe, the late Chino Achebe said, things are falling apart. The center could no longer hold. Um, we cannot single a judiciary and say that uh, it's thoroughly sanitized. There's no rot in all its ramifications. Uh, we can't uh, completely say that. Um, this sector of the, gov of, of, of the government is still manned by human beings, affected by the realities of the time. That is not saying that... Um, or rather, on all fours, um, saying that there's corruption in the judiciary. Uh, that's not a straight jacket statement. But the, the truth of the matter is that we shouldn't look at judiciary as um, a sector of the government manned by celestial bodies. These are still uh, people uh, who, yen, um, uh, 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 who, also, who are also affected uh, by what goes on and all that. So, um, uh, yes. Um, the, 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 the welfare of the judges, if it, if, if, if it is improved, uh, should affect whatever thing in terms of sanity, in terms of handing down some judgment, in terms of efficiency, diligence, and all that. Yes, that, that, that's a, 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 a factor that should uh, give credence to that. That's quite a, a, a factor. Uh, but just like I said, uh, it's not um, all encompassing, it's not um, um, a guarantee, so to speak. It's not a guarantee. It's not a guarantee. So it's still part of the economy. It's still part of the government. It's still part of um, the individuals um, that we regard as um, 
people from the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Of course, you see what is going on. What have we been talking about? What the salary of the judges, and when you look at it, I'm not saying I'm not going to say that the salary or the benefits are not sufficient. But the realities of the time, like I said, what's happening in Nigeria, it's affecting a whole lot of sectors, um, um, a whole lot of sectors in, in terms of um, the welfare. And when you look at it, you, you, you find that, like I read in the news yesterday, the, the Naira um, is losing, increasingly losing values. And when you check some of these people, um, you find that they transfer forests, maybe for their wards, their, their children, uh, maybe doing one or two things abroad and all that. People still look for money. That's not justification for any infraction. It's not justification for anything. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is that um, things are falling apart. The center could no longer hold. That's um, what I can say. Now, let's also look at the role of the NJC. More, I think, in the first quarter of the year, we saw several judicial officers, lawyers get punished for some 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 infractions, especially as it pertains to giving court injunctions. And most of them were said to have been done out of the courtroom without due process. With that as an antecedent, don't you think it should also serve as some credibility to the NJC and a deterrence to other judicial officers from being caught culpable of such infractions? Sorry, could you come, with, come, uh, come again with that, please? I, I, I barely had what to say. I said making reference to some punishments handed out in the first quarter of the year by the National Judicial Council to officers of the court who were found to have infringed on the protocols involved with passing judgments. Don't you think that uh, the NJC deserves some applause for serving as the, 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 the umpire in keeping judicial officers on their toes? Absolutely. NJC actually um, has been trying in terms of um, um, punishing the erring uh, judges and the judicial officers. I think um, they have been doing a whole lot in that regard. Um, but just like I said, um, most of the time we ignore um, certain factors um, that should be nipped in the board to forestall some of those nefarious uh, uh, practices. That is the thing there. Sanity in the judiciary is something that should be approached from a holistic perspective. The welfare of the judicial officers should not be ignored. It is not just about uh, increasing salaries and all that and, uh, and, uh, and, um, and um, allowances. There are so many things to be done. There are so many things to be done. Now that a new, um, a new uh, chief justice of Nigeria has been appointed, um, I believe just light at the end of the tunnel. I've had her statements. Um, she um, is bent on bringing in a whole lot of sanity, um, trying to clean up a whole lot of things in the judiciary. It, it's something that should be approached from a holistic perspective. It is not about um, saying we have increased allowances and we have increased salaries and all that. It doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there. There are so many things to be done uh, to forestall that. I've had them. Um, one of the judges saying that um, even judicial officers are always complicit. They are the people trying to bend the rules and all that. They bring judges uh, closer, uh, bring the news very close to the judges' necks, try to make them try to uh, 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 pressure them uh, in one way or the other into um, into to cutting corners. So these are things that um, NJC has to look into too. Yeah, reforms. Reforms should come in. A whole lot of reforms and all that. We, we can borrow from other jurisdictions on how to do it. We've talked about independence of the judiciary and some other things. Um, but just like what the judges were saying, yes, you have to even look at it from the cradle. Check the judicial workers and how it happens and how so many things happen there. Um, I was part of this system, actually, when I was in active practice um, back in the days when I was still, uh, I mean, when I was still um, 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 maybe uh, relating with the, with the, with the, um, lowest echelon of the judicial workers talking about filing processes and all that. When you go there, you see what is happening. The least of them would want you to um, rub their palm. Or a simple process will pass through them. Not directly, not trying to by conduct. Of course, you know these things happen. 
If you don't do that, you'll get a whole lot of delays. So we need to look into all these. It, it, it transcends, it, 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 it goes up, 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 up to the judges and all that. So um, that is um, what um, NJC should uh, uh, touch light and see how they can uh, tackle it headlong. Now, yes. now, now, my final question about the judiciary before we move on to other matters in the news also stems from the appointment of the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Kudirat Kekere Kun, who many Nigerians have said questions the process of appointment. Should this be the prerogative of the executive? Shouldn't the NJC have a role in determining which of its most senior judicial officers is worthy of such position? And should it be a function of the executive to appoint and, uh, and, uh, and determine who such substantive judicial officers are? Okay. Um, appointment, of appointment of judicial officers, the appointment of chief justice of Nigeria is well spelled out in the constitution. Um, yeah, the, the, the incumbent uh, CJN, the processes, to my knowledge, um, I am not aware um, if, if there are um, some of the rules that are left out in her appointment. And if, it is, if this is coming up later in the day, um, I, I don't think I've got wind of that. But my impression is that um, all the rules, all, these, all, the, all, the, all the prescriptions of the Constitution were complied uh, uh, with. I have seen her defending, or rather, um, answering questions on the floor of the National Assembly. Um, it, it, it is my belief that um, 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 the rules in her appointment um, except um, whatever thing uh, is the reservation is on seniority in the judiciary. That has always been the issue in Nigeria in terms of appointment of um, um, judicial officers of that cadre, appointment of uh, justices of that cadre. Um, seniority has always been the, the issue. Even, in, even why, in the wider practice, in the wider legal practice, seniority is, uh, is reckoned that. Seniority is a very cardinal factor. Um, Yes, if, if seniority was not maintained, then um, I think um, that appointment um, has a lot of issues in it. Um, like I said, I really have not followed up thoroughly on that. I, I would have to check it out. We'll, we'll come back to you and we're hoping that we'll get more in-depth analysis when you review the uh, processes in her appointment. But now let's touch on something quite significant that happened yesterday in Abuja where we saw photos and images of the National Security Advisor, Malam Muribadu, and the Chief of Army Staff, General Christopher Musa, destroying over 2,400 military equipment. And uh, the NSA made strong comments. He said that terrorism is only thriving in Nigeria because security personnel are taken from the armory of the government and supplying bandits. What do you make of his comments and... The destruction of the 2400 uh army equipments um that statement yes i saw that statement um um where um malam nuhuri badu was um, talking about um the criminals making use of the uh, uh, government uh, making use of the military equipment and all that it happens actually even in the other jurisdictions, even in other areas, in other places um, where uh, 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 terrorism is a problem or where um, armed violence is a problem. Um, but what we will have to know uh, uh, the, 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 the peculiarity of Nigerian situation is that um, the way the counter terror or counter insurgency campaign is being done in Nigeria is quite a, 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 something to. Uh, something to talk about. It's quite something to talk about. In one of my treatises, in one of my uh, uh, pieces, in one of the things I've written in, uh, in this regard, I had said that there should be a kind of audit, if I may use that word in the crude sense of it. Uh, there should be a kind of uh, checks in the counter-terror, counter-insurgency campaign. From time to time, um, I, I made this statement when the former... Uh, Chief of Army Staff was there. Um, what's his name again? Um, Lieutenant uh, uh, Tukuburatai. 
Buratai, when Buratai was there, when Buratai was there, he is presently an ambassador in Benin Republic. I, I don't know if he's still there. Um, he stayed in, on that position. He stayed on that position for a very long time. I said that, um, and of course, there were controversies even when he was there. For the new chief of army staff, for him to be changed to bring in another person, it was a very big issue and all that. And then security is a very sensitive thing um, as far as um, as far as um, policies is concerned. As far as policy is concerned. That is part of the reason when you, you have a guard here, you want to change that guard after a while. You don't allow him to stay there for a long time. There would be accumulation of so much distractions. There would be accumulation of so much... Um, 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 complicity and all that. So you wouldn't want that to happen. It's always very strategic. And of course, the experts, the people in this particular realm know uh, about what I'm talking about. It was never complied with at a point in Nigeria. It was like a privilege. It was like um, a cash cow. So people stayed in certain positions for a very long time. Even the people, the foot soldiers do this particular thing, strategically, there should be a kind of flux. That is a way to forestall complicity, a way to forestall um, a kind of a sabotage and the rest of them. And of course, you face sabotage. That is what happens. If you check out major blows, major major uh, loopholes, and all that, major loss in terms of um, in terms of uh, backlash, in terms of um, attack on soldiers and all that, uh, we are we are we are uh, colossal losses are recorded. If you check it very well, you find out complicity you find that sabotage that's what happens most of the time and of course in in, in a portion of that sort you would see um even the, 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 the even the even the not i'm not talking about the dissidents this time around i'm talking about the, the soldiers or the security operatives involved in this um you you you, you see them um making something out of what they are they are doing um trying to exploit the situation uh, to make some personal gains um, that is most of the time what leads to this kind of loss. That's what leads to this kind of loss. That's not saying that um, <clears throat> that's not saying that um, the dissident will not have an upper hand. Yes, they do. Even anywhere in the world, of course, you see what is happening in, uh, in Lebanon and elsewhere. Um, you, feel, you see the losses suffered by the Israeli soldiers and all that, and then the losses um, 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 uh, uh, losses suffered by 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 by. Um, um, by the Lebanese um, side, you know, you, you 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 find that a whole lot of times. So it happens, but in the strict sense of it, you still see reasonable degree of sabotage and all that. Reasonable degree of infractions here and there uh, from the people that are waging this war, from the legitimate forces and all that. If what should be done is not done, if you don't audit the process, if you don't change pe certain people especially in the slightest suspect, especially in the slightest report and all that. But what happens in Nigeria most of the time is when you feel that, um, of course, we know what happens in the wider, uh, like I said, that things, things are falling apart. Even down to the football and all that, you still find out that um, there are people that are favored. There are people that will feel that uh, these people should be here and these people should be there. Depending on what interest they are championing, they can influence it. They can always influence it. So uh, that's what is um, uh, that, that that's what the case is. That's what the case is. Now let, let's that's address the, the, the issue of our border as well. Uh, talks about our borders being porous and illicit arms finding their way to be trafficked so easily across the borders. The challenge here is that those borders are supposed to be manned by respective security outfits. And if the NSA is telling us that those persons manning those borders are indeed compromised, does this entail a wider uh, wider would I call it fear that terrorism would continue to thrive in the Nigerian space? Yes, the border is a cardinal factor. Of course, we know that. We know that the border is very porous. We know that it's, it's, it's still part of what we're talking about. The border is very porous. That, that's the thing there. Um, border control has been a very big issue in Nigeria. Very big issue in Nigeria. That, that is the thing there. Uh, the proliferation of... Um, of, um, of um, small weapons of and light small arms. arms and light weapons um, has been an issue, um, especially in this part of the world. Uh, that is the thing there. The route is there. The right route is known um, as times of them are coming from Libya and some other places that have experienced uh, major wars uh, in recent time. Um, you see this proliferation and all that. But the 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 the, the NSA is trying to say that. Um, 
um, it's from the government coffers that some of these weapons that they are taking from the government and all that. Yeah, in terms of invasion by the bandits, um, um, attacking the soldiers and cutting away their weapons, we've seen that happen a whole lot of times. But the point I, I have made is that you see sabotage here and there. That's what happens. Because when you see when you find when you see Nigeria in terms of the security challenges we are facing, in major blows, in major losses, you begin to wonder why it happened. Why the scale of loss, the scale of casualty reached that particular crescendo. Um, and when certain things happen, of course you know what uh, the, the effect effect um, ordinarily is. And uh, like outside there, like I said, and you find out that if Israel suffers major loss, uh, they, 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 they investigate it most of the time. Yes, there, there's no um, with their with their with their with their, with their heavy high, um, higher firepower. Um, there are certain laws that you don't reasonably ordinarily expect. That's what happens most of the time. And again, you find that it, it, like intelligence has been a challenge. Gathering reasonable intelligence um, has been a challenge in Nigeria uh, most of the time. And again, like I said, when you don't prosecute the the the, the offenders. When you don't check from time to time uh, the people waging the war, the, 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 the forces waging the war, how they are doing it, um, if they are complicit, it, 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 the bottom line, people staying in the position for a long time. Um, there's um, accumulation of distractions, accumulation of um, infractions here and there. It happens most of the time. And that is the case of Nigeria. Um, some people, um, there's this sense of entitlement in certain positions, especially when things are coming in there. Even in Niger Delta, you see that happening a lot of time. Like uh, we have cases of bunkering. <clears throat> you find out that those that have stayed there for a long time are the people doing all this. The natives meet them and then um, connive um, to 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 uh, show the soldiers, or rather the people who just manning these particular territories or this particular infrastructure, how it has been happening. They tell them this is the business going on here. So you join us to do that. If you prosecute, if you change or check from time to time, you'll find out to a very great extent. Um, I'm talking because I have been in the Northeast um, from time to time. I've seen I've seen this happen a whole lot of time, where because someone has stayed in a position for a long time, um, there's accumulation of distraction. That is the word I can use for now. Um, and, 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 and being human, um, being someone affected by uh, things falling apart, um, you, you find the person bending the rules. So we just have to start from there. You need to check from time to time what they are doing. It's not just because they are gaining mileage, but who is there? How long has he been there? What and what achievement um, has he performed as, as a commander, as a leader, or, 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 or stuff like that? That's um, all I can say for now. Well, well, thank you for helping us put these issues in perspective. Let's leave issues of judiciary and security and look at issues of the economy. Now, the World Bank has published a report that has received some knocks and some kudos. The reforms of President Bola Metinibu have been questioned. The World Bank is also urging that the federal government audit the NNPC for some outstanding indebtedness. Now, amidst all of this, the most shocking statistics is that 129 million Nigerians have slid into the poverty line. In perspective of how to shape the economy whilst keeping the citizens as priority, how does the federal government treat this World Bank report, in your opinion? Sorry, could you come up again? I don't, I don't know. I think there's an well, interference. Well, well, the network, question. though, let me take this again. I'm talking about yeah. the current World Bank report that is urging the federal government to check the NNPC for indebtedness and also the worrying statistics that 129 million Nigerians, by the current administration's policies, have slid into the poverty line. How does the federal government approach this issue in question, minding Nigerians who need to be brought out of poverty and the need to revive the economy? Yeah, there's no gain saying the fact that um, poverty has deepened in Nigeria in recent time. Um, courtesy of the of the policies of the incumbent administration, and uh, of course um, that's that's um, a, a recurrent decimal. Even in terms of analysis, we've talked about that a lot of time. A lot of time. Yeah. Um, whatever the scorecard um, World Bank is bringing to the fore, um, it is quite clear. It's quite clear that um, poverty is rocking the nation. 
people living below the poverty line are increasing um day by day by the day yes so so there's no there's no there's no need it's, there's no need it's no longer news it's no longer news um and all that it's no longer news and of course we, we've seen that um uh, 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 in different quarters we see that even Nigerians are beginning to just an outcry that is reaching every nooks and crannies of the of the country and people are seeing it that is the thing there businesses are not thriving we've seen that businesses are failing shops are packing up those that are based on the forest uh, uh, to to do their business it's no longer it's no longer um uh, uh, uhuru that's the thing there so I don't know um, whatever um, perspective, I don't know however they're looking at it. I've seen comments where people are saying there's light at the end of the tunnel. I wouldn't um, probably fault that. But the, the, the present situation is something um, that um, is causing a whole lot of um, outcry. Like we had said in the previous sessions, um, I don't know policy formulation, policy implementation, I don't know is this how other countries did it to reach their El Dorado? Is a big question looking everybody in the face? I don't know. I have said that this is cataclysmic. I have said that this is so stringent. I have said that this is unbearable. The ordinary Nigerian can no longer raise his or her head um, to do what they usually do in terms of living their lives. It's so worrisome. It's so worrisome. The price of fuel I don't know. Uh, that is a cardinal factor. This is a cardinal thing when, uh, that Nigerians, um, Nigerians rely on to go about their, 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 their businesses. Um, and and I, I, begin to, I begin to wonder if this, is, if this must happen um, for, the, for, for, for the administration of um, Ebola to, uh, to, to achieve what they want to achieve, if there are no other ways they can do this. Um, even, even the Bible, many clear, a little here, a little there. That doesn't mean you have to be Udo, Idoko trained. There's what the Chief Ghanaian for me calls Udo, called the uh, Idoko train. Um, the, his analysis when he was alive, he said that a particular government was Idoko trained. That doesn't mean you have to degenerate into that. But I still believe that if things are strategic, if things are strategically channeled, this particular, uh, this level of outcry wouldn't be happening. That is my simple belief. I don't know. The policies are becoming overwhelming. I have said that the concept of safety net is that you build things where people are going to hang on, where people would find succor, where people will find a kind of relief. If the news is tightening here, they should find a relief from some other angle. That is injecting a bit of welfare into neoliberal policies. That is what so many countries are doing. That's what so many countries are doing. That's the thing there. In the United States, for instance, I've seen free buses here and there. Students jumping into free buses said it's free. You can just join it. It's free. Just um, check out the schedules. A particular time when you join those buses, you're not going to pay a dime. I don't know. But they are telling us they are bringing in all this. I have not seen it in very substantial proportion. I have not seen it in significant uh, 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 proportion. It's just slip service. It's just slip service. A um, couple of weeks back, I entered the public transport, just out of curiosity. I uh, saw how people are packed, are packed in public buses, in public uh, vehicles, and I began to ask, is there nothing government could do to at least ease transportation, at least in the FCT? There's nothing like that. People still suffer all this. There's nothing, and all these things that I the news, I have not seen it in different quarters. You go to find out you don't see anything. Okay, the CNG buses, we've seen, seen one that exploded. That is not even part of our analysis. But a lot of Nigerians are saying, we don't even know when we can do the conversion. We don't even know how much it is worth. Let me give you another example. Here in the United States, I visited a particular university accommodation, and I discovered that close to 80-90% of the power day is renewable because they have a... When I was in Europe, I remember as a student in Europe, I used electricity to a particular portion, and I got an email warning me that uh, it's excessive, that I may have to pay a marginal cost, because they did not have as, as much sun. So they, would not, uh, they were not able to utilize uh, maybe renewable energy. In Nigeria, we have the... We have... Nature has blessed Nigeria that... Some of these things are, are, are not being harnessed. 
What does it take for government to subsidize their energy? What does it take for them to embark upon that project? What you see in the present day is tax this, tax that. What you see in the present day policies that are so excruciating that the ordinary Nigerian could no longer raise their head to do anything. The policies are just so excruciating. Now, now in closing, understand. Barrister, sorry to cut you, but in closing, we have two more minutes. And it's important to reiterate that your vehement opinions are shared by many Nigerians. But the conflict is that the First Lady does not think that this hardship is caused by her husband. Opposition voices in Peter Obi and Atiku Abubakar are saying that Nigerians are in this mess because of the current administration's policies. Let's get your thoughts in two minutes as we close. That is a fatal blow. That statement by First Lady shouldn't be coming from that quarter at all. It, I, I, it, it's marks of classified ignorance. She should go back and check the indices. She should study countries that passed through similar reforms. Is this how it was done? Previously, it was blamed in the previous, uh, uh, the previous administration. Now, it is no longer caused by the, by the, by, 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 the, by, by husband. I don't even think, I don't even think that statement is coming from an informed, uh, from informed premise. I, I think it's a careless statement. I, I'm sorry to say that. It should, that statement shouldn't be coming from that quarter to Nigerians. That's what I'm saying. It shows insensitivity. It shows that they are not in tune with reality. That's what it is. I read news that the president goes about in the night to see that Nigeria, whether Nigerians are suffering. What kind of thing is that? I don't understand. What kind of culture is that? I don't get it. So he's still trying to find out if Nigerians are facing uh, 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 harsh conditions. So he doesn't, he's not, he doesn't live in the Federal Republic of Nigeria to see what is going on. He doesn't pass the road every day to see people that could not even feed two times in a day. It's very unfortunate. It's very, very unfortunate. It, it, it's something that calls for, I don't know, I don't know. Nigerians shouldn't fold their hands like that's like I'm saying. I have to be bold enough to say, you should embark on a peaceful protest. Peaceful emphasized. Peaceful emphasized. Every day Nigeria should raise their voice to make it hard. If the president is going to find out, come to the street for the president to see you. Because this shows that the president doesn't know what's going on. So try to make the president know what's going on. That's what it should be. We should not just fold our hands and look there and people are just dying every day. I've never seen this kind of policy anywhere. The indices are there. The first lady should go back and then check it. Get her team to enlighten her more on that. That statement is very careless. They're coming from that quarter. I mean, they should bury their, 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 their faces in shame for crying out loud. All right. Uh, they should do that. Barista Elias of we must thank you for coming on the program. This is much as time with a Ford for us to review local stories. We... Wish you the best at your trip in Arizona. I uh, hope you bring back a greeting card uh, when you're coming back. Thank you very much, Beto. Thank you for having me.